you were a hairdresser for nine years. So you worked at a for salon. For nine years. Or you working at the salon and every week watching SNL and going, I'm better than those people. I could be on that show. I will say, and this is so weird, and I, I don't consider myself a cocky person. I'm doing hair. I would watch SNL because I was like such a fan forever. I knew that I wasn't on any sort of trajectory to be on SNL. And sometimes I would watch and I'd be like, I feel like I could do it, <laughs> which yeah. was, but I only said it to myself, never to anyone else. I know exactly what, what you mean. <laughs> Who was like the first person that said something to you where you thought like, okay, let me go pursue this thing. My friend Rachel was in the Groundlings and okay. I went and saw her in a show. After the show, I was like, I'm so happy because now when an out of towner comes in town, I have something to take them to an improv show or a sketch show. And she was like, yeah, but also I wanted you to come because I think you should take a class. Mm. And I was like, but I'm not an actor. And she was like, but you leave me seven minute voicemails in character. You could do this. Yeah. And then my brother, I told him, I was like, I have a friend who thinks I should take improv. And he was like, this is a very big brother thing to do. Um, he said, I've been waiting for you to say that our whole lives. I'll pay for your classes. That's amazing. Wow. I know. That's, That's awesome. amazing. I know. So, so, so how did SNL, SNL find happen? you? So they came and saw me do a showcase at the Groundlings. And that was really cool because... Um, I knew they were coming, like I had a week to prepare and it was again at like my home field and, you know, the groundlings packed the house with friends and family and students. And I had a really good showcase. I, I felt good. Well, you know, I felt, I felt it in the moment. And then afterwards you're like, I don't know. And you don't hear anything for two weeks. Yeah. And then I get a call that they want to fly me out to New York. And they're like, we want her to do the exact same set. Just do that. Um, cause it was like producers and talent. And then I'd be going out, you know, for Lorne. And they're like, that's the set we want Lorne to see. I go out there. I'm feeling good because I knew my set worked. Um, and I wanted to be undeniable. I did like 12 characters and was just like, this is, the, you know, you have like four minutes. Um, I don't remember any of that audition because it was being a lifelong SNL fan. It was also the first time I'd ever been in the studio and on the stage. Yeah. So like they walk you out to the stage. And as prepared as I thought I was, then suddenly I'm like on the host stage, like where they do the monologues. And so I'm like, I'm, I wanted to say like, can I take a picture? And they're like, five, four, three. And then I'm auditioning. I do my audition. I feel good. A week goes by. We get a call and they say, we want her to come back out. This time she has to do a totally new audition. because I think they want to know that you can turn over material in a week. And that was cool. And that's where all the groundlings training really came in because I was like I did everything I did those 12 things like I don't know those are like my like heavy hitters yeah but then I got to be like oh, okay well what are like the characters I had in sketches that didn't work like you know that sketch might not have worked at the groundlings but like that character worked for even 10 seconds and so I got to like play my bench in like the second audition and that's the one I really remember because I'm like oh that's like, like my motley crew of characters yeah. that I love and yeah. And so then again, I fly home. Um, I see other people as I'm leaving to go to the airport. Other people are um, that I knew had auditioned. We stay right across the street from 30 Rock. I see them going back to 30 Rock the next day to go to meetings with Lauren. And if you read any SNL book, you know that a meeting with Lauren is a good thing. Yeah. I'm like texting my agents and managers like, are you sure I should get on the plane? Like, do you think I might get a meeting? They're like, we've heard nothing. I go home, I don't hear anything for 10 days. And on the 10th day, I get a call from him. Wow. <laughs> so I had grieved it. I had mourned it. I had You're thought, like, it's not happening. Yeah. <laughs> it's not my destiny. Yeah. 